Hi, I'm NASA astronaut Rick Mastracchio, University of Connecticut graduate. I'm currently orbiting 260 miles above Earth on board the International Space Station. I've been here about six months and I'm scheduled to land in Kazakhstan around May 13th. I could not be there with you on this big day, but I wanted to pass on my congratulations to the 2014 School of Engineering graduating class. When I was thinking about what to say, I was trying to figure out how to make this speech different than all the other commencement ex addresses that are given each year. And then I realized I'm in a weightless environment, so maybe I should give the speech in a different orientation. Then I thought, no, everybody will get a stiff neck trying to twist their heads. So I think this orientation is better for you, the audience. First of all, I would like to say thank you to the provost, the dean of the School of Engineering, the administration, and the faculty for inviting me and allowing me to talk to the graduates for a few minutes. I probably have the best job on and off the planet. I've met many people in my travels. The two questions I am most often asked are how did I become an astronaut? And many people also want to know what does it take for them to become an astronaut? How did I become an astronaut? I sent in my first astronaut application after the Space Shuttle Challenger accident in 1986. This application led to a job as an engineer at the Johnson Space Center. For the next nine years, I sent in my astronaut application every year. But I wasn't just sending in an application and crossing my fingers. I was working on things to improve my chances. I went to the University of Houston at night to get a second master's degree. On the weekends, I trained for and received my pilot's license. I worked hard to build up a good reputation at the Johnson Space Center. Finally, all that hard work paid off when I was one of about 120 folks interviewed for the job in 1992. But I was not selected, so I continued to try and inter interviewed again in 1994. And I was not selected. And then I was interviewed for the third time in 1996. Now, nine years is a long time to pursue anything, especially a job. And during this nine-year period of applications and interviews, I did not stop living my life. I still had a great job that I loved. I was working at the Johnson Space Center, developing space shuttle flight software and procedures. I was flying space shuttle simulators and working with the engineers and the astronauts that make NASA great. It was a great job, and I was happy to work there. But after nine years of applying, and three interviews, my perseverance paid off. I was selected in 1996 as part of the 16th astronaut class. Now, the second question I always get asked by folks I meet is that they want to know how they can become an astronaut. Well, you become an astronaut the same way you accomplish any goal, through hard work and perseverance. Everyone has goals, dreams, and wishes, but not everybody wants to do the daily work it takes to reach their goals. Let's face it, big dreams and lofty goals take hard work and long hours to achieve. You achieve big things, not with one big step, but with many small steps. You didn't complete college in one day. It took you working hard almost daily for four or five years. Other big goals and accomplishments will probably take a similar level of work and effort. So I've come to realize that the difference between the people who get selected as, a, as an astronaut or those who achieve their goals and those that don't is the ability to work towards their goals on a day-to-day -day basis. You have shown that ability. You have succeeded in graduating from the University of Connecticut School of Engineering. Let me tell you and let me tell your parents, your family, your friends, that is not easy. I have been there. I spent four years living on the store's campus. I took similar classes in the engineering building. I lived in the dorms on East Campus and North Campus in Belden Hall. I spent way too many hours at the library studying and preparing for exams. I know that you worked hard to get to this point, and now you know. You know how to achieve a major goal. 
You know how to work hard. You know that you can succeed at difficult tasks. That same work ethic and perseverance that got you to this point can take you a long way. It is up to you on which direction you go and how far you take yourself. You have opportunities in front of you that you cannot even imagine at this time. I started out in the same place as you. Now I have launched three times on the space shuttle. I helped build the International Space Station. I launched on a Russian Soyuz rocket and now I'm living and working in low Earth orbit. Most of these things were beyond my imagination. So remember that all of those small steps and all of that hard work can take you a long, long way. Let me finish up by saying to the parents, families, and friends of the graduates, I know you are proud of your graduate, but you should also be impressed by their accomplishment. And to the graduates, let me say that it is great to work hard, but remember, your family is very important. And remember to also have some fun along the way. I know I do. So, congratulations to the 2014 School of Engineering graduating class. Oh yeah, one more thing. Go Huskies!